Hey everyone, it's Travis speaking. We're back again with a little bit more Revit architecture. And this time we're going to look at creating new wall types instead of using the ones that are predefined in a template. And we're also going to look at manipulating some of the wall geometry using the Edit Profile tool. So to start off, we're going to do that. And as you notice, when I select one of these walls, they highlight in blue. And you can see the walls in behind. So this is called ghosting. I'm just going to use this one right here and I'm going to go back into the edit profile and you'll notice that I get the pink lines defining the border of this wall. So if I come over to the front elevation with my view cube, I've got this nice border that I can use to define some more geometry in this wall. If you look up at the top in your draw tools, these appear when you get into sketch mode. So you can use your line and you can start a line anywhere you like and use the temporary dimensions or you can type them in whatever you like. I'm just gonna make a small shape over here and then we'll close that loop and when you do this you might you might get an error when you go to accept it. You need to have your outside perimeter and then you need to have closed loops inside so this is very important they always have to have closed loops because whatever is in between is going to be the solid mass of your wall. So I'm just going to make one more shape here. We'll put a circle in there and maybe an ellipse. And let's stop it right there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this line here just to show you a couple little modification techniques. And so now we've got a number of segments. I can take these away and use these different segments to create this new shape. So what I'm going to do is just use these grip functions to bring them back to where they intersect. You should see them close. Again, I'm just bringing it to that point. If that doesn't work, I can always use my trim extend feature select one line then your next line let's see if that's closed up so when I hit the green check mark there should be some space in this wall now so again we'll just move that into a 3d view so you can see a little more clearly what we've done but that's what you call editing the profile of a wall so this is handy if you want to do uh, an ornamental opening or something a little bit uh, out of the ordinary you can get some really neat features on your walls so the second thing I wanted to show today was how do you get uh, a new wall type into your project. In a situation where you don't have the wall type defined in your template, what you can do is edit the type. So we're starting off with a basic wall. It's an exterior wall with brick on wood stud. If I hit the edit type button here in the type selector, I get the type properties dialog box. So what I would want to do is duplicate this because what we're going to do for simplicity's sake today is just create a new brick on wood stud wall but this is going to be for plumbing so I'll call it plumbing and I'm going to leave most of this the same just to show you a preview of what this wall looks like in plain you can see the brick exterior with a cavity and then your core the drywall on the inside so when you go to change this you're going to want to come over to here where it says structure edit now you can see these different elements of this wall lined up. So you have your exterior side, the first element being the brick, and it's five or three and five eighths thick, and you have a one inch airspace. So you can make changes to these values. You can change the material property. You don't see that right off the bat. So those are ways of changing this, say, from wood to a metal stud. I'm just going to cancel out of this. But all I want to do today is just change this 5 to a 7 so that I have a 2 by 8 for a pipe chase. So I'll change that from a 5 to a 7 and when I click OK this wall should get 2 inches larger. And just to show you a little bit more, if I wanted to add another element into this wall, maybe this wall needs to have 2 layers of drywall for fire rating. What we can do is highlight the closest one to the edge, we'll say insert and right now it's saying structure so I want to use the drop down menus to come back to finish and then choose what type of material this is going to be so this should already be 
uh, a drywall in here, gypsum wallboard. And we'll say OK. It defines the material. And I'm going to put that in again at half an inch. So it's actually going to be two and a half inches thick. Now you can see it added that element. And again, we could change the thickness of our airspace. We could just make that uh, one inch, or sorry, it's saying one inch already. If we went two inches, you see this update in your preview panel. So we'll bring that back to one. No need to make that larger. And we'll hit OK. And now you can see that this wall here has automatically updated. So when I click on this wall, it's saying brick on wood stud plumbing. And if I click on this one, it's just saying brick on wood. So now I can come back to any of these walls again and change them to our new wall type, which appears right underneath the old one. And you'll see it automatically update. And again, there's some extra features in here, like you can uh, increase the height of walls manually with the grips. You can change from your base constraint to use unconnected heights this way. This is a handy feature when just working in the 3D default views. So at any time you have a lot of freedom with defining your walls. You can take them off and on the grid and you can lock them with constraints. But uh, these are just some quick tips and tools on how to create walls in Revit architecture. Thanks for watching. Bye now.